Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I'm Garrett. As, as Debbie was saying, I'm uh, I'm the, the assistant manager here at uh, the Pittsburgh Artists and Crafts and Supply. Um, I think I recognize at least a couple of you, but um, we're we're an employee-owned art supply store. We're located in Squirrel Hill, um, here in the city. Uh, we've been in Pittsburgh for a little over 20 years now, I think, at this point. Um, but we uh, we we started in Portland, Maine, um, in I think the early 90s. Um, we do have a number of stores across the US. I think we have something around 20 stores across the country at this point. Um, but we do carry all kinds of materials. Um, we try to cater to uh, just about any artist of every stripe. Um, so we, we have materials for um, intermediate artists, professional artists. Um, we do try to carry a good amount of stuff for, uh, for crafters and uh, sort of beginner level creatives as well. Um, so all kinds of stuff, a big mix. Um, we have everything from like fabric dyeing stuff, candle making stuff, leather working, um, batik, uh, all kinds of paints, you know, um, oils, acrylics, gouache, watercolor, all, all of those good things. Um, so yeah, we, we try to be, uh, we try to be pretty multifaceted. Um, as Debbie was saying, we, we are, uh, we have pretty much the whole ground floor of the building that we're in and, uh, it's, it's pretty labyrinthian. So it's, a uh, it's fun to explore. Um, it's easy to get lost, which I think is a benefit. Uh, <laughs> um, we're usually pretty helpful if you if you get too lost. Um, but yeah, so we have all kinds of stuff. Um, pretty low key uh, as far as today goes. Um, I am coming to you from the store. Uh, we just wrapped up for the day, uh, so I'm just hanging out after hours. Um, but I have just a couple materials that that I really enjoy that have been kind of popular with us lately. Um, and I have like some little color charts and stuff. I'll I'll kind of show you. Um, I also uh, Kind of wanted to throw it as like an open ended sort of thing. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you want to talk shop, um, we can totally do that. I love talking about art supplies, as you guys can imagine. I do it most of my days. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty casual. Um, I did also want to mention before I forget, um, you guys do get a discount for being members of the Art League. Um, so whenever you come in to visit us in store, just let us know that you're a member um, and you do get 10% off of everything that's not on sale um, and sale stuff is typically an even deeper discount. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, but yeah, uh, any questions before we start or any, any hellos or anything like that? I want to just say thank you for being there because I run the North Hills Art Center and you, yes. you're about the only place I send people now for art totally. supplies because yes. uh, you are by far the biggest selection and the best resource we have. So well, thanks for thank you for doing what you do. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we try. We, we do our best. It's, a, it's definitely a labor of love on our part, too. So um, we, we appreciate you guys stopping in. You know, this whole thing doesn't happen without you guys, too. So um, it's, a, it's a good symbiotic relationship we have. Yes. Here. But um, yeah, we, we, we love serving. So it, it works out well for us. Um, feeds our yeah. habit, too, you know. <laughs> and, and thank you so much for joining us virtually yeah. this year. Yes. Uh, if, if for people who haven't been with us, Garrett usually comes in and joins us once a year and he brings all these great new supplies that they have so we can play with, uh, you know, the new paints and the new papers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this year, but uh, thank you so much for, for making this adjustment for us. Totally, for sure. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, I, I do have, it's it's always fun to meet in person and, you know, kind of get real actual hands-on time. Um, some of the stuff I have today, um, I do have samples in the store. Um, so if you guys come in um, and you're curious about a particular thing, um, if I'm not on staff, you could probably ask someone else and, and they should be able to help you. But I do have, um, specifically, I have some Golden Products, which is an acrylic company, um, but I have some of their mediums as well as some of their paints on, uh, that, that I have available for sample. So I can maybe hook you guys up with some of that um, if you come in to visit. Um, I do also have, I still have some Daniel Smith uh, watercolor charts left over that are really cool. We did, a, we did another virtual thing with them uh, last week. Um, which we usually put out through our, our newsletter and Instagram and stuff like that. Um, and I still have some samples left from that. So if you guys come in soon and you're curious about that, you can just ask and uh, maybe we've got some goodies for you too. Um, but yeah, my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me as always. Um, always so, enjoyed uh, coming in the past. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and, totally. and, and also as part of your uh, presentation tonight, please make sure you touch on the fact that you do uh, different demonstrations and classes at the, yes. uh, at the location yeah. too. Yes, totally. Well, I'll, I'll just touch on that right now, which is um, in the past, obviously, like pre COVID, those things were a little bit easier. Um, but we typically do, um, we do all kinds of stuff. We, we usually go to some public events and do virtual or like demos and stuff, hands on demos um, throughout throughout the year. Um, with COVID, it's slowed down a little bit, but we do, we do still try to do stuff here and there. Um, 
Last year we did like a tie dyeing demo in store, which was very fun, pretty low key. Um, we're pretty frequently doing um, little like introductory like printmaking uh, demonstrations and stuff like that. Um, there's a product that that I love a lot that we carry here in the store. I don't actually have a sample of it right now, but um, it's a it's a gel plate, which is essentially kind of like a silicone plate um, that Speedball makes. There's a number of companies that make them, but we carry Speedballs. Um, but they actually uh, the surface is reusable um, pretty much indefinitely, um, so you can ink directly onto the plate and then do some really cool monotypes. Um, I like doing them with texture work uh there was a period of time where i was doing a lot of uh cross sections of vegetables and i would actually print the sort of like structure of the vegetable onto onto prints and that was a lot of fun um some pretty unique sort of uh textures and and sort of like uh you know lines and things like that that you get out of just like some really common items uh leaves also always really fun to do with with those sort of prints and stuff like that but uh we try to keep things pretty interesting as far as like our little demos and activities usually we'll be going to like public events and stuff like that around town so there's always a chance we'll kind of pop up we've done like things with um with like rivers of steel down at the carry furnace in the past um we've worked with like uh we did like a wyp event in the park a couple of years ago things like that um so we sort of just float around uh, and then usually yeah like i said we, we try to keep things fun we try to have some unique stuff on hand um, but yeah, so we, we do that stuff as well in store. We usually do some more intensive demos like we've done. Um, we've had a couple uh, artists come in who've done like hand lettering demonstrations and introductions to like cal calligraphy and things like that, um, which are always really enlightening. Uh, we've had a couple uh, watercolorists um, around the area. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Marcy Mason. Um, she is a Pittsburgh legend, in my opinion, um, just a phenomenal watercolorist, but does really incredible classes. And we've been fortunate to host her in the store a couple of times, too. Um, she's kind of just gone over different painting techniques and stuff like that. So we're hopefully we'll we'll be doing a little bit more of that. I, I have a good feeling about this year. Um, I, I think that we're we're on a we're on a good pitch. Um, so hopefully you'll you'll see some more of that stuff happening uh, in the near future too. Um, but yeah, all kinds of all kinds of events there. Um, lots of different things. Um, as far as like, I mean, all of us in store have a, a pretty wide breadth of knowledge too. So uh, we're usually pretty happy if if we have a down moment. We're always happy to talk about stuff in store. Um, we do have again some limited materials on hand, and we're usually pretty happy to sort of walk you through uh, different practices or kind of showing you how different materials work. Um, so that stuff is always available to you, regardless of uh, of time frame or anything like that. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the general overview. I do see there's a question in chat about international shipping. Um, I believe we do. Um, you would have to double check on our website. We have a separate group that sort of handles um, web uh, orders and, and things of that nature. But I'm pretty sure we ship internationally. Um, Yes, I'm like 90% sure. It's always one of those things where it's like caveat, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure on that one. I think, we, I think we've got you covered. Um, and we do ship all over the US obviously as well. So there is that too. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else? Anybody else have any questions or anything so far? Oh. Does the discount still apply to people who live internationally? So the discount right now does not apply through our website. Um, we've been doing some work to try to figure that out. I think it is still limited to just in-person shopping. Um, it's again, it's something that we're trying to figure out. Our website is sort of its own animal. Um, so we do have a, an IT department that sort of troubleshoots those things. Um, there's always a chance that maybe we could offer you some sort of reimbursement or something like that. Um, if you are curious about it though, I can give you the store email, which I'll actually, I'll just put it here in chat. And uh, then maybe we can talk about that more. But off the top of my head, I don't think so. But we are sort of working on that. I know it's in, in troubleshooting right now. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Maybe it could be uh, discount code West Hills 10%. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think discount codes are also worked into that. I think we're, we're trying to figure out that whole process. I'm unfortunately not the tech person. So with all of that stuff, I'm like, I don't know. It's some sort of witchcraft that they have to do. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I just focus on the pencils, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Um, where are you? Where are you from, or living at, by any chance? Uh, I live in Costa Rica, actually, Wonderful. but I'm from the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, I'm Very from cool. Moon Township. I grew up there, and I've been here for about ten years. And I know that people are. I know that COVID was difficult for many, many people. But Certainly. I have to say. It's so inspirational to me when I see things like Zoom meetings happening yes. as a result of COVID and a way for people to reach out to one another and overcome that physical separation. Definitely. So 
you know, it, it, for me, it's like, it's, I'm so happy to be able to be here and, and participate remotely. It's great. Absolutely. And the, the lovely thing about this West Hills Art League, this monthly meeting, we have a meeting every month called Show and Share, where we share what we're working on and it's a, a much more casual meeting. And we, you know, we talk about materials and things. <clears throat> and it's very interesting to me because I'm learning about so many different materials and different mediums. I work primarily in, in oils very traditionally. Wonderful. I've tried using, <laughs> excuse me, like liquid and as opposed to like uh, stand oil mixed with turpentine or linseed oil and turpentine or straight turpentine. And, you know, it's almost like overwhelming when you get into the nitty gritty of each of the different mediums or the differences in paint. Like I, I explored and I bought some of that Williamsburg brand paint, which I know they handcraft that brand in Williamsburg, yeah. Brooklyn. But I can't say that I was like, oh, wow, it's so special, but it's you know, it's always interesting. Maybe a different color would have that impact. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, there's always so much to learn. And in the meeting, the show and share, people are using like metallic paints or reflective paints. Um, we were just talking about in the last one, we were just talking about pastels that come in little pots. Yes. Like I, which is interesting to me, like, and all the variations behind pastels and the paper and the mediums like there's i mean what i don't even know where to begin with that <laughs> certainly um yeah i always um i always think of like um uh, well it's it's funny because the joke amongst us here at the store is um that that working at the store is essentially our our unofficial um art degree or graduate degree um <laughs> because you you do spend so much time just sort of engaging with those things um but i think especially with um I, I've never been able to commit to a single medium, um, and that definitely hasn't been helped by working here. Um, but I think that so much of so much of art practice, as I sort of approach it, is um, so community focused in the sense where um, there's not enough hours in the day for me to try every medium that intrigues me. Um, but I, I get to uh, have a lot of those conversations with with a lot of artists about um, you know practices that work well for them, and and so much of what I enjoy about. Um, about art making in general and, and you know, groups like like um, the North Hills Art League is uh, that community is such a big part of creative practice for me. Um, and I think that that's probably felt by by a lot of folks here um, because you you get so many of those sort of like, um, you know, tricks of the trade or little secrets that like, you know, maybe you can't ever quite figure out that technique or like what the heck is liquid, um, but somebody else who who just is sort of um, na natural to it or, or has really built up an affinity for it might just have that one little secret that sort of breaks it all open for you. Um, I, and, oh, yes. sorry. No, I, no, I was going to say, absolutely. Even yes. like with the different brushes, you know, I was Certainly. just thinking that it would be a great demonstration to see what shapes different brushes make, you know, why use Definitely. the really long one with a really small point yes. as opposed to just like a zero zero brush or yes. why use this particular wing shaped brush as opposed to like a wedge shape. Certainly. The, you know, and, and sometimes like a, a whole painting can take so much longer because it's the sort of trial and error on how does this work and how can I apply it? How can I make it look like this? So absolutely. Yeah, um, definitely. Brushes are a huge one. Um, I, especially to, um, I, you know, there's again, so many little mysteries with them, um, with, you know, uh, different brands have their own distinctions of numbers and different titles for just shapes and sizes that look very similar. Um, so a lot of that feel, it can feel like guesswork. Um, and, uh, I will say, uh, for what it's worth, we, we carry a lot of Princeton brushes in the store and uh, they actually on their website, um, so that's P-R-I-N-C-E-T-O-N, -E um, they have a pretty comprehensive breakdown on um, different shapes of brushes and how those sort of function. Um, and that was pretty elucidating for me just trying to get a feel for, um, you know, the different shapes and sizes and, and things as I sort of like um, broadened beyond like, oh, flat and round. <laughs> um, which I find myself still using a lot. I am a I'm a diehard angle shader uh, person. Oh. I, I I I think that uh, one good angle shader will get you pretty far. But I do. You you mentioned liners, and I I do love liner brushes. Um, you you don't realize how how much work it was to line uh, until you use a, a brush that just has the retention of something with an extra long bristle, um, which is often what those liners look like. 
Um, so yeah, uh, a prime example of, of something that does take a lot of trial and error, but talking to different folks who have different experiences working with different brushes really makes that kind of can cut out a lot of the middlemen as far as, uh, as far as figuring out what's, what's what there. Yeah. It's very um, interesting. Now I need to go check out that Princeton site. Yeah, um, it's really handy. Um, you said you you work in oils primarily. Yes. Yeah, um, they have they have a lot of great oil lines, but I think they actually their breakdowns um, are by different mediums for their brushes. Uh, they have a couple brushes that are sort of considered mixed media, so they work for they consider them workable for all mediums. Um, but they do have a couple that are that are oil specific, and they actually have some interesting ones. They have some synthetics with uh, some kind of unique textures to them um, that aren't quite a natural, but have like a little bit more of a coarseness than most of your sort of typical synthetics. Um, but those are those are pretty cool to work with, and they can give you some really cool textured work um, as well. They also have like um, you mentioned liquid, so I'm thinking you might be interested in some impasto sort of work. Um, but I believe they do have, a, they're called like catalyst wedges, um, which are a silicone um, that's like pretty, it's it's pretty stable, it's pretty workable. I actually have a spatula that I use uh, for baking <laughs> um, that's made by them because they're pretty heat resistant. Um, but they, uh, they have all kinds of different shapes and sizes for pushing paint in really unique ways. Um, they have like some forked edges and stuff like that that can give you some really interesting shapes too. So if you're curious wow. about more ways to push around paint, you might want to check out, uh, they're called catalysts, so C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T, um, brushes or sh shapers, sometimes they're called too. Uh, but those are really cool as well. Yeah. Oh, I will, definitely. Thank you so much for yeah. that. That's a yeah. lot of information. Oh, I yeah. feel like my, I'm just beginning yeah. to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, my, my <laughs> pleasure. Uh, again, stuff that you just, <laughs> I, I just picked this up from uh, from talking shop. Um, and again, I think that's really the benefit of these things is uh, you, you, you can really kind of hone your art practice um, before you even really start. Um, if you if you talk to a lot of folks who kind of have had similar experiences to uh, to what you're trying to do or what you're interested in doing. Um, so really, again, it's I, I think that that little conversations like that really are such such a benefit for, for sort of figuring out your art practice. Wow, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, really absolutely. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, totally. My, my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad I could be. <laughs> I'm glad I could be helpful. Um, I, I love this. If, if anyone else has any any other sort of open ended questions or anything, I'm, I'm happy to talk. Um, like I said, I do have a couple things to show off so I can kind of show off some some things too. I don't know if I have like a hard time limit or anything like that. Like I said, I'm pretty casual today. So I'm in, I'm in a rush. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, cool. That's good. Just go ahead and, you know, why don't you go ahead and show us some of the things that you picked out okay. and then uh, maybe that will uh, inspire some people to ask some questions, uh, you know, once they see those products about other things that you have there. Totally. That sounds that sounds great. Um, well, I'll start. I know I mentioned um, I know I mentioned them earlier, and since we were kind of talking about like more sort of dedicated paint stuff, um, I'll I'll just bring up um, so sort of the first little thing I have to show is um, so there's the acrylic paint company called Golden. Um, that's G O L D E N. Um, like the color. Uh, they are a professional paint company, an acrylic paint company. Um, they've been around for a good long while. They are actually the same folks who make the Williamsburg oils um, that that person mentioned. Um, Williamsburg oils, uh, great oils. I like them a lot. Uh, they are considered a professional grade. Um, I think with them, I mean, it's, I always kind of tell people like it's, it's, you, it's, you can get pretty far with a, with a with a sort of like student grade or sort of like middle grade paint um, if if that's really like like your endeavor. I, I always try to encourage people like you can make art with any sort of material. Um, it's it's nice to have nice material, but like you everybody picks their battles as far as what that looks like. Um, with those typically like it's a higher pigment load. Um, that's really like the huge benefit of them. Uh, they do have some really unique colors and um, some proprietary colors that are pretty vibrant. Um, I think specifically. Uh, I think they have an opera rose or pink that I'm just like obsessed with. It's just like a very vibrant pink, kind of similar to uh, the Windsor Newton uh, opera pink in their watercolor line, um, which is also just like a, just such a rich color that I just love. Um, but so we're talking about Golden, uh, which is like their acrylic paint side of things. Um, so Golden is a really cool company because they do have a couple different paint lines with different consistencies. Um, so the, the, the ones that we carry in the store, which is not all of them, but um, the kind of the, the, the big hits. Um, so we have a heavy body paint, which is usually like your, your sort of thick, buttery, um, creamy sort of acrylic paint, um, decent pigment load. 
Um, they also have stepping down from that, they have a high flow acrylic, um, which is a sort of like thinner, um, but higher pigment concentrated paint. Um, so it's going to sort of feel fluid. It'll feel a little bit more like an ink, um, but still has a decent body to it. So pretty good opacity there throughout their colors. Um, and then stepping down from that, they have a high flow, which is sort of like their most pigment loaded paint. Um, very, very thin, almost like an acrylic or a watercolor. Um, and just like a really good saturation of colors, super great for tinting and mixing, um, especially if you already have a concentrated color that you're sort of trying to tint or bring up or down in any particular way. Um, so we have those, but then the thing that I think makes them really unique is uh, they also carry a lot of um, different acrylic mediums. Um, so acrylic mediums is, is essentially just the term that means um, it, it can vary from uh, mediums or things that you mix paint into that have different textures, different <laughs> consistencies. Um, some have different properties, like they have a fabric painting medium that makes uh, the paint a little bit more flexible. So it's a little bit more workable on fabrics, um, makes it a little bit more wash safe too. So it's generally a little bit more stable on clothing and things like that as well. Um, they also have some mediums that work for um, uh, increasing the sort of like adherence to uh, non-porous surfaces, so say glass and plastics and things like that. Um, but the ones that I think are really cool are their textured mediums, um, which are a number of different mediums that have different properties, everything from like a sort of sculpting medium uh, that has almost sort of like a thick um, like shaving cream or like whipped property to it. Um, and then as well as like some other textured mediums that have like say glass beads in them, um, some that have like a sort of pumice texture so that you get these really cool stony sort of pox uh, sort of uh, textures. Um, and, and so a lot of different unique things there. Um, but I have just like a couple little sample boards that I'll kind of go through here. Um, I don't know how well they'll work with the camera. I wish I had a more professional setup, but we're working with what we got. So <laughs> I'll kind of show them up here. But um, so I have these glass beads, which you can kind of see. So they're all of these tiny little balls. They're almost like little pearls. Um, and they are completely clear. And then they're kind of suspended in, a, in an acrylic fluid. Um, and those are really great. I really like using them for underpainting and then sort of painting over top of them. Um, you can get some really interesting sort of textured work that way. Um, because it is a clear medium, you can also mix color into it. Um, and so you can get sort of like colored texture um, to either sort of embellish. Uh, something that I'll see pretty frequently with these is um, say like crest of a wave where you want kind of like that sea foam. Um, just adding like a little bit of white to that, um, maybe even just like a touch of blue um, and getting sort of like those nice soft sort of like crest to a wave. Um, pretty popular, um, do you, do you very cool. Paint, do you yes. mix the paint with it or do you paint it and then paint over yes. it? Yes, so you can do either. So you can either use it as an underpainting just as is or with another color, um, or you can mix color into it directly and then paint with that. Um, so you can go either way with that. Um, and I, I and like, I've used them. Um, yes. I've put them on top of the paint and it yes. gives almost a refractive effect where Absolutely. the light catches the clear beads and enhances the color underneath. Right. It's almost like a glaze. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you got it. And like uh, the, the bead texture is very, very fine. So you I pretty much have this one. Again, it's kind of hard to see, but I do have it down to a single layer of beads and you can see they're pretty it's pretty thin there. Um, so they're they're really fine. I would say they're almost like um, I'm trying to think of, you know, they're they're going to be a little bit bigger than like um, grains of salt or something like that, but they are going to be pretty darn fine. Um, so you can do some really cool work with those. Um, you can layer them up as well. So you can kind of add some refractive layers to the, to that as, as Kim was kind of mentioning. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that one. Very neat. Um, also kind of in that same realm, um, I have, let me see. So this is also, this one might be a little bit harder to see, but this is actually a fiber paste. So it, it actually is a, an acrylic medium with paper pulp in it. Um, so you get sort of like these fibrous textured layers um, that just again, sort of have like a nice sort of like, um, I'm trying to think of a good comparison, um, almost like a, like a sort of like real sort of chunky snow <laughs> or something like that. Um, that, that nice dry powdery snow. Um, and and so, same deal with that one, it does dry white, but you can pigment it um, either with, with an acrylic color directly in um, or over paint. Um, it does have a little bit of absorption to it. Um, so there's almost a little bit of a porousness. Um, so great for working color over top of as well. Um, the next couple, I do have some color in them. So hopefully they'll be a little bit more visible. Um, so kind of a step up in terms of texture, I would say sort of between that glass bead gel and uh, the fiber paste is I have a coarse pumice gel. So this is the one that I was mentioning kind of has, uh, so it is like little pumice stone sort of blended into the paint. 
Um, and then it does have like a pretty chunk, chunky, like almost sort of like wet sand texture to it. Um, this color looks way better in person, I will say that. Um, it's a nice hot pink, but it's here it's like more like sad chewing gum. <laughs> um, but so I, I just kind of work this on with a palette knife and uh, those, those layers are dried, so they're completely indelible. Um, so you can get some nice sort of built up textured effects with it. Um, you can also sort of blend it or work it in with, um, with another sort of like uh, uh, finer bodied acrylic medium to kind of like smooth out some of that sandiness. Um, but I do really like the texture on this one quite a bit. Um, and I, I just pigmented that directly. So I mixed it up while it was still uh, wet and then applied it. Um, but you could also do an overpainting with that one because of the nature of the pumice, it does sort of have like a grayness to it just as is, um, just because it, it is sort of a stony um, sort of medium, um, but takes color really, really well. How long um, would you have to let that cure before you want to varnish it? Yeah, so they do okay, dry like acrylics. So they dry pretty quick. Um, I would say with that, just because like the layering was so thick, I think I did let it sit overnight before I really messed oh, with it. Bad. But because it is an acrylic medium, like a water-based sort of paint, um, it will set up pretty fast. I want to say that it was probably like stable um, within maybe an hour or so, um, as far as like, I wasn't worried about it sort of running away or, or chunking off. Uh, with, with that one specifically with the coarse pumice gel, because like, and then they actually do make like a sort of fine pumice gel as well. That's a little bit less rocky. Um, but with the course, um, since it is so stony, um, if you really try to work it, uh, it will sort of start to sort of start to clump and sort of pull away from you. Um, so sometimes you need a little bit more of a gentle hand. But can again, you, you can that, kind of, yeah, go ahead. Can you build that up on a flexible stretch canvas or do you really need a stiff substrate? I would say so. If I were doing the canvas, I would maybe be a little bit more inclined to go for like the fine pumice gel, or maybe even again, mix some acrylic medium into that just to sort of stabilize it a little bit. Um, I would say it would still work pretty well on canvas. Um, but again, because it does kind of, it, because it's so heavy, I would maybe work it on flat and let it dry flat um, before I set it up or just have it at a good angle where you, you, you don't have to worry about it falling straight off. Um, because it has the acrylic in there, it will set decently. Um, it won't but, crack. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it doesn't like, it doesn't crack so much as um, it's almost like uh, I'm, I'm full of the metaphors today, but uh, you know, uh, if you, if you just had like a, like a puddle with some gravel in it or something and like, it just like, it would <laughs> move around in that sort of way, which I know I'm making it sound horrible, but like the texture is really like, if you're a texture person, I think you'll get this, <laughs> um, but it is, it's, it's really fun to work with, but it is a very specific thing that you're sort of going after with it. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I've, I've pretty much switched over to wood panel at this point, just because I, I like the stability of it. Okay. Um, but as far as canvas, like I said, I would probably just uh, leave it at a good angle, you know, maybe like something more than like a, more than a 45. Uh, and I, I think it would probably set pretty well. Um, but yeah, I'd let it set, set up for at least an hour or so before I'd really start messing with it. Um, and if you were going to varnish or do any sort of like really like sort of intensive sort of finishing work, I would probably let it sit overnight just to be safe. Um, but that, that varies again, based on like layering and, and sort of like the density of the medium, um, for some of these thinner mediums, like they're probably good to go in an hour or so. Um, but with something thick like that, usually, you know, it's like anything you want to just give it a little bit more time to set up. Um, so another one that I'm, I'm a big fan of, so they, Golden makes a lot of different molding pastes, which are, again, they're kind of the ones that I would say feel a little bit more like a shaving cream or something like that. Uh, so this one, me being obsessed with texture, uh, giving myself away here, this is their coarse molding paste. So it does actually have, again, a, a little bit of a pumice texture to it. And I would say this is a little bit closer to that sort of fine pumice texture. Um, but all of that layering that I did, that was just palette knife and, you know, pretty quick rough stuff here. Um, but what I really like about the molding paste is, and it, it varies based on the different levels, um, but they really take gestural sort of like brush and, and knife work. Uh, really, really well, and they'll really hold on to it. So you can get some really fine detailing without really diving too deep into the paint. Um, I find a, a lot with acrylic, it's, you know, it's pretty easy to overwork uh, an area. I, um, so I do really like uh, working with a, with a medium that really kind of cuts down on the amount of investment or, or sort of like engagement I have to do to sort of find uh, that, that place that I'm looking for as far as like the, the right feeling or the right texture. Um, I also really like, and this one might be kind of maybe a little bit more interesting for anyone who does any sort of like patinaing work or, um, or, or sort of like, uh, what is the term, uh, vintaging, uh, but, uh, so this is actually a crackle paste. Um, so this one 
is sort of meant to sort of crack upon drying. Um, and there's some good cracks in here. I'll try to key them in the light here. It's a little tricky, but you can kind of see there's sort of these little hairline fractures through here. But essentially this medium is kind of developed so that it is a stable, it will develop a stable acrylic film, but it does get these nice sort of aesthetic cracks to it that just, uh, they have, again, a really great texture to them. Um, the, the easiest comparison for this one is like, you know, sort of like baked earth in a desert or something like that. Um, just really easy to sort of get that really specific look without doing any sort of like laborious, like after work, um, sort of as after you've set up the painting. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a really big fan of, uh, of that medium. It's also I, because of the nature of the texture. Um, I find that it, it gives me a lot of, uh, it gives me a lot of sort of abstraction that I'm not really intending for. Um, it's pretty easy to just paint straight with that. And then you see all kinds of different patterns and things form sort of after the fact. Um, I really like going through and lining the cracks with like an alternate color um, or sort of setting something into them as well. Um, so yeah, really fun one too. Um, but yeah. I have, yeah, question. Sorry, I have, I have the golden molding paste. I've yes. been scared to use it because I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. But, <laughs> but I didn't know if, because I once made a, all sorts of texture on this one painting. I like sure. a clear, I wanted to be like the, 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 what I was painting onto, right? The undercoat. But mm -hmm. I put, I actually used the regular matte gel. Okay. And I texturized with that. But then I didn't, because again, I didn't know what I was doing with that either. Mm -hmm. I put gesso on top of it. Is that a step that I didn't need to do? Um, specifically for like, uh, for painting over it? Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can just paint onto um, pretty oh. much any of the acrylic mediums. Uh, with the matte gel, with the gels in general, um, I would say I would say they're good to go. The matte gel probably even more so just because like the matting, uh, the matting, uh, uh, solids uh, in the in the gel will probably give you some extra texture to grab onto. Um, sometimes I find uh, with say something like this one, this is like a tar gel. So it's like very thin and very sort of like glossy. Um, mm -hmm. I find it pretty frustrating to paint over that just because I feel like the acrylic kind of kind of behaves in, in weird ways. Mm -hmm. um, so with with something like say a soft gel gloss, um, you might see the paint sort of move around a little bit more, um, but you can, they will, they will all accept acrylic over top. Um, gesso obviously will kind of like stabilize your surface. Um, but if you want some of that under like that, that, uh, that, uh, you know, the sort of consistency of the, of the gel medium to sort of show through on your overpainting, um, you can definitely just go straight on. Um, and again, yeah, I, was just, I was just creating texture with the, yeah. the under underpainting with the gel, the matte gel. Totally. But then I was, once it dried, I was like, I don't know if this, I don't know if I'm supposed to, so I just gessoed yeah. over it. And, yeah, no worries. And like gesso obviously is a super easy way to build up layering. Um, and if it's, it was the case, I could have skipped skip that step. That's yeah. just one less thing for me. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, and you, you totally could have. Um, and like I said, it might just be like, it might take a little bit of playing around to sort of get a feel for the, that texture uh, mm -hmm. because the texture of the medium is going to be different than say like the texture of like your gesso canvas um, but it, it will accept acrylic just fine and and it should layer and laminate uh, no problem at all uh, so you should be good there you can skip that step cool yeah thank you <laughs> cool good question yeah I feel like especially once you once you start working with layering um, things become a lot more uh confusing <laughs> or at least it's it's a lot easier to get your wires crossed so not not an unusual question I feel like folks have that one pretty frequently um yeah so that's kind of like golden mediums in a nutshell there are a ton more um we do have we have a great chart here in the store I'm kind of I'm tethered to a computer right now so I can't I can't do the store run um, but we do have a big board of of a lot of their mediums um here it's it's in the aisle sort of over top of them um they it's also great because um they are painted onto canvas they are hand painted so they are true swatches um so you can get a feel for all the texture and you can even kind of see how how it looks in three-dimensional space which I think is super useful um for for sort of getting a feel of how those really will look um that you can touch them as well. I always love touching them. I recommend touching them um, if you feel comfortable touching them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's all kinds. There's a uh, there's sculpting mediums and things like that. There's also um, one that I think is really cool is they actually make like watercolor and pastel grounds. Um, so those are great for setting up a surface. It's basically like gessoing any sort of surface to take watercolor media or pastel. Um, so the pastel one sort of has a sanded texture to it. Uh, the watercolor one kind of feels like a paper pulp, um, but it, again, it will just kind of help with the adherence or absorption of those colors. 
Um, you can do watercolor on uh, canvas and stuff that way as well, uh, which is pretty pretty fun to pretty fun to work in that way too. Um, so yeah. Can I ask you a question about the paints again? Absolutely. Um, do, um, do they still make the open acrylic? They do. Um, so we we can special order the golden uh, open. Uh, we do actually. There's there's a customer um, who who gets it pretty frequently um, and we'll, we'll do direct orders for her. And usually those come pretty quick. Uh, we did used to carry the open line uh, here in the store, but unfortunately just, it wasn't a big seller for us. Um, and because our footprint is pretty small, um, we have to be a little bit more aggressive with, uh, with what we carry in store. Um, so we do ca still carry their heavy body, their high flow, their fluid, um, and a decent amount of their mediums just all day, every day. Uh, but we don't carry the open, um, but we can, can, special can order them. explain to everybody what that is. Yes. Yeah. So the open acrylics are, um, they're essentially a, a long or slow drying, um, acrylic paint. Um, I can't remember specifically what their drying time is off the top of my head, but I think it does put it somewhere around 48 hours or so. Um, if I recall correctly, um, and they tend be, to be kind of glossy. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm so right. they do sort of have a little bit more of a sheen to them. Um, they do feel, you know, the idea is that they're supposed to be a little bit closer to oil painting. So you can do some of that sort of longer form, um, you know, blending and working, um, and heavy layering that, that folks typically like with, with the long sort of cure times of oils. Um, they're really cool. Uh, the sort of alternative that we have to that is we do have, um, we have a, a, a retarder base, um, which essentially slows the drying time of any acrylic paint um, that Golden makes. Um, so you can mix that into any existing acrylic and it will kind of function similarly. Um, they have mixing ratios on those as far as like um, dialing in for sort of like the specific sort of drying time that you're looking for. So that's sort of our substitution for that. Um, but the oil paint, or the open paints are great because like they do just function that way out of the tube. Um, I only tried them once and I thought they were really neat, but I haven't really seen them for yes. sale. Except yeah, for yes. Yeah, that is that one. And um, Golden just recently started carrying a paint called a uh, So Flat, um, which is a matte sort of acrylic um, that I'm really I'm really curious about because I I really like gouache. Um, so that sounds a little bit closer to to my beloved gouache. Uh, but we, <laughs> we don't carry those yet. Um, I'm hoping eventually, uh, but not currently. But with that stuff, we usually can work out a special order. Um, some of those might be available on our website, too. Sometimes the website has stuff that we don't have in store. So you could check there as well. Um, but yeah, you. yeah, absolutely. Great question. Uh, Could you talk a little bit more yes. about the pastel grounds? Yes. Uh, because what I've been working with is, is developing a process of having different modeling paste covered with a black gesso. And then right. I've been doing pastel over top of it. Yes. And then trying to find a good way to seal it. Yes. Um, and I was just wondering if I should be looking at the grounds instead of doing the, the process that I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, you, you might like the grounds because it, it does sound like it's probably a pretty similar process to what you're doing. Um, again, they're going to have kind of a fine sort of sanded tooth to them. Um, if you've ever used like an art fix, like pastel paper that kind of has like your, your sort of sanded surface, um, it feels pretty similar to that. Um, I believe it just is straight white, um, but you could definitely tint it the same with any of their other mediums. Um, so you could get tinted pastel uh, grounds that way. Um, but yeah, it, it, it should essentially function very similarly to the process that you're using. Um, and then you could, you could finish it off with like a, you know, a pastel fixative or, or something of that nature to kind of stabilize it. Um, but yeah, it, it, you, you might, you might want to look into it. It could, it could work for you. Um, with, you have, with pastels, have, it's, it's usually, um, it's, it's more so, uh, just dialing in like the right sort of tooth. Um, so obviously like gesso and things will accept pastels. It's just more so if, um, if, if it's the right sort of texture for you, obviously sometimes gesso can be pretty coarse um, or, or sort of a little bit more geared towards like acrylic painting. So it's not necessarily, um, it, it's not necessarily geared towards something as sort of chalky and, and dusty as, as a pastel. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And that's what I've been, I've been playing with that coarseness to get kind of totally. a, a texture going with that. Yes. But uh, the problem that I've been having is with trying to find something to, to seal it, to kind of, to mm -hmm. hold it. Uh, without uh, completely uh, sure. degrading the brights, the white totally. and the pastels. So is there a, a, a spray that um, you would suggest or that you find? Yeah, well? yeah I believe um, we, we carry a, a pastel fixative, I believe by Sennelier, um, S-E-N-N-E-L, 
<laughs> I E R. Um, that's spelling B. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we typically carry it. I'm looking right now, and it looks like we are still out of it at the moment. Um, some of the fixatives have been a little bit slow to come around uh, at the start of the year here. Um, I know that there's been some delays with making like the actual aluminum cans that they're that they're sort of packed in. Um, so it could be something like that. But we do usually have that one, and I would say I would say any sort of like true pastel because there's a lot of like mixed media fixatives. Um, I would probably stick to specifically a pastel fixative because it's probably a little bit more geared towards color. Um, sometimes your your sort of general use ones are sort of a little bit more um, like graphite or charcoal oriented, so I feel like they can kind of saturate colors in strange ways. Um, so I would probably I would probably try like a true like a pastel specific fixative. And that was going to be my next uh, uh, next one to try. So totally. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. On the right track. Um, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, speaking of pastels, um, my next, uh, my, my next little goodie is, uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with, um, Karen Dash. Um, they are mostly pencils and, uh, these are their, uh, I believe they technically call them, uh, wax pastels. Um, I have all kinds of colors here. Let's pull up a couple. Um, so these are their wax pastels. Again, the colors look much better in person. This, my, my camera is a little sad here. Um, so what's really cool about these, they are essentially crayons. They, they do have a very soft sort of buttery texture like a crayon, um, but they are actually water soluble. Um, so they, they function essentially like a sort of like a solid watercolor or like a water soluble uh, pastel. If, if any of you have used like the Prismacolor, like new pastels or anything like that. Um, but they're really unique because uh, the texture is pretty versatile, um, so you can get nice blends of, of texture sort of similar to a crayon or a, a very soft pastel. Um, and then you can actually take a wet brush and sort of wash that out on, on your piece. Um, folks will often also use them. Uh, they'll, they'll blend them onto a palette, usually like a plastic palette or, or something uh, non-porous, um, and then take a, a wet brush and actually work off that straight like a palette. Um, so their colors are super blendable. Um, they're pretty saturated. Um, in terms of their tones. Uh, so they're really, really rich. Um, so a little bit generally goes a long way. Um, and then they do have just that, that added benefit of, uh, of, of being water soluble. So you can sort of blend them out um, in really unique ways. And then my coworker actually made this color chart here, which you can kind of see, I'll turn it sideways so we can see all the colors. But so the little line there is just like the straight run with the, uh, with the pastel. And then you can see the color blended out with a wet brush. Um, but yeah, so really great uh, saturation of colors, super vibrant, lots and lots of colors. Um, but yeah, those are, uh, those are definitely a fun one. Um, a big fan. Uh, we, we definitely have uh, converted quite a few watercolors over to them um, just, just because of their function as, as both a dry and a wet media. Um, so a, a really cool one that I'm, I'm just a big fan of. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I had pastels once, but because I'm left-handed, it turned into just a big old smeared up mess. Yes. Does, is that better for somebody? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it will function. Um, it, it, it could work well for you um, for two parts, which is that they do have, because they are sort of more of a crayon, they're a little bit more stable than a pastel. Um, so I can kind of rub this with my fingers and you can sort of see it, it because they are more waxy. It won't really work off on you, um, which I'm a pretty messy artist. So um, usually with oils and, and soft pastels, I usually get a lot on myself. Um, these are a little bit more stable, sort of like a crayon. Um, unfortunately, I feel like there's always a there's always a chance of smearing, um, especially I'm sorry for, for left-handed folks, you got it rough. Um, but uh, it, it, it is a little bit more stable uh, because it is water soluble as well. Um, if, if you feel comfortable working with a brush, you can just work up uh, pigment onto a brush um, and sort of go straight from there. Um, I was looking at some other techniques um, earlier today and uh, there are folks who actually also like sand them uh, with sandpaper um, and then just sort of create like a little pile of shavings um, and then either take that on a blending stump um, or wet it onto a brush and work it that way too. Um, so another, another sort of method for Sort of getting pigment onto paper without necessarily uh, getting down and dirty as far as getting really close to. Um, so blending stumps also might be might be a good one for you. Um, give you a little bit of reach uh, for for some of those colors <laughs> too. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I do I do like those quite a bit. Um, also, kind of in that same vein, um, Karen Dash does make a similar product in more of a colored pencil form. Uh, so this is their Super Color line. 
Um, so these are more like a true colored pencil. Um, I would I would describe them if, if there are any uh, colored pencil artists here. I would say they're a little bit softer than uh, Prismacolor Premier. Um, they are still a wax base, but they do have just like a little bit more softness, a little bit closer to that sort of wax pastel. Um, those ones also water soluble. Um, so again, you you can sort of uh, do your sort of detailing work, uh, dry on your paper, and then use a wet brush to sort of wash out you know desired areas. Um, bring that color to to other areas as well, which is really nice. Uh, you can also work on a palette or a wet a brush and sort of work directly off of the end of the uh, of the pencil. It will kind of start to give you pigment as well. Um, but yeah, also a, a pretty cool option. Um, both of those are endlessly indelible. Um, or endlessly workable rather, um, which means that for as long as you can wet and reactivate it, it will continue to blend. Um, so that, that can be a great thing if you are a true or sort of like pure watercolorist and you're, you're constantly working in wet media. Um, but if you're looking for something kind of similar that, that will kind of set so you can do layering over top of it, um, there is also these, which is uh, Derwent, uh, which is a different sort of a mostly pencil and colored pencil brand. Um, but these are their ink dense line of colored pencil. Um, so these are similar in the sense that they're water soluble, um, but they are sort of more like an ink. Uh, so once they activate once, um, when they dry, they're set. So they become indelible to water. Um, so they, they do develop this permanence where you can do layering over top of them and it won't really interfere with your sort of under layer. Um, so if you're doing like really rich washes um, and, and you want to kind of do uh, additional washes over top of that, um, but you don't want to interfere with that lower layer, it will kind of bind them um, so that they do sort of function as, as a sort of stabilized layer. Um, so I do really like those ones. Another really cool thing that I recently found out is they are also... Uh, workable on fabrics too. Um, so you can actually also uh, work with them directly onto fibers. Um, and they do have at least some wash fastness. Um, I'm not sure about the specific wash fastness of them. I don't know if it's a, if it's a functional sort of dye or if it's more of an aesthetic dye, um, but at the very least, pretty cool there too. Um, yeah. Now, Any do those uh, pencils come in sets and yes. individuals? Yes. So I do have individuals of all three of those. So the wax pastel and the two pencils. Um, and then I do typically have sets of all three as well. Um, and I believe at least for the most part, I think the sets I have usually 12s and 24s. I might have 36s of the ink tents. I can't quite recall. Um, but they do have a pretty broad range of colors too. Um, yeah. So they do come in sets and individually here in store. Thanks. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Could so, you? yes. Oh, well, I was just going to say, could you just sort of summarize the, or maybe later, like, let us know, like, the, the differences between those three, the yes. two wax pencils and the, and the, and the other one? I know that I understand the Derwent is like permanent after it dries, and the wax pencil before it is workable as long as it's wet. Yes. But what was the, the, the first one, I guess. Yeah, the... So that one is, um, it's, it's essentially very similar to the, the second one, the super color. Um, those are both the, so the first and second one are both, uh, and I have this on a little tab that I'll actually, I'll paste it in the chat right after this. Um, but okay. so those are, those are both, uh, from Karen dash, which is the same brand. Um, the first one, this guy here, um, is a wax pastel. So it's going to be more crayon like um, it will kind of function similarly to a crayon and sort of feeling um, or again like a very soft wax pastel. Um, and then the super color um, is is very similar to that in terms of like pigment load um, and actual like blending quality, but it is more of a pencil sort of form. Um, so a little bit firmer, still pretty soft as far as a colored pencil goes. Uh, but both of those will blend okay. with water sort of indefinitely. Um, so you can kind of endlessly work them. Um, the other one, the ink tents, that last one there. So that was the one that um, it activates with water once. Um, and then after that, it sets. So once it dries after being activated the first time, it will set and become completely stable. Um, so yeah. Just Would it to, be possible? Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry no. to interrupt. Would it be possible to use the Derwent and the one, uh, the, the one before it? on the same piece of work Certainly. on the same piece of paper yes yeah so okay. they're they're all going to be um they're all going to be water-based media like there's there's no sort of oil bases in any of those um so they'll all function together pretty well um in terms of uh in terms of uh, order of operations um it, so they will all work on the same paper uh the derwent once it hits water once um after that it's going to be pretty much permanent 
Um, whereas the other one will be sort of, you can reactivate it infinitely. Um, so the, the second one will be sort of more adaptable as you go. Uh, whereas the uh, the ink tents will be permanent, like uh, like once you get to that point, it's going to be set. Um, so really, it's just kind of figuring out what's best for you in, in the sort of certain circumstance that you're working in. Um, if you if you want something that's going to be kind of endlessly adaptable, that'll kind of wash and work um, repeatedly, uh, you would probably prefer one of the first two. Um, if you wanted something that's going to be a little bit more stable, uh, you would probably want to work with this with the uh, with the ink tents, the the latter one. Could you combine them on the same drawing though? Could I yes. like do area? Okay. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. They'll, they'll function together just fine. Like they'll, they'll, they'll sit just fine on the same paper. You could even layer one over top of the other and like uh, they, they will work just, just fine. I imagine you would probably see some blending and everything from them too. Um, just in terms of, of workability, the, the properties are a little bit different. Um, and I'll post just like my little breakdown on those three here. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And what kind, of, what kind of paper do you recommend using those with? Yeah, so I would say if you were using them just dry, probably like a mixed media or a pastel paper is fine. Um, if you were taking advantage of the of the water solu solubility of them, if you were introducing some wet some wet media to uh, to the paper, um, I would probably work with a watercolor paper um, just because it's going to be more stable. It's going to be more rigid, so it will it will take to uh, water uh, better. Um, you could work with a lower, like a, a lower press, like a, a, a lighter paper, um, and it'll it'll function okay. Um, but I would probably stick to again if you want to take advantage of uh, of sort of blending those with water, I would probably stick to a watercolor paper. Let's see. Okay, thank you very much. Totally, absolutely, it. very insightful. Yeah, yeah. My, my my pleasure. Oh, I'm glad to hear. <laughs> Um, any other questions right now? I'm just making sure that my uh, my my notes make sense here before I post them. I have a question back on back to the golden golden. Uh, yeah. So, uh, actually, it's, it could be any anything, any brand. Sure. I don't care. Uh, I have some paintings that I don't like. I don't. I want to paint. I want to use the canvas, right? Sure. Like I, I don't like them. I they're old. You know. I just want paint. I want to paint over. Totally. Um, start a fresh, a new. I don't remember if I painted on them with oil or acrylic. Mm -hmm. So I attempted, it's like, well, I'll, I'll try to like put a, I think I used um, Joe Sonia clear glaze medium and I painted over it. Sure. And then I tried to glaze over that to try to start fresh. Sure. And then it started yellowing. And I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> All I know is I want to make, I don't know if it's oil or, or acrylic. I just want to get it to a point where I could paint over it again. Yeah. Well, is there any solution, any, 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 uh, anything that like anybody makes that I could just paint over it and who cares what was under it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think there are, I will, I will say off the top of my head, I would have to do some research, okay. um, but I, I, I think there are, I think with the thing that might be giving you trouble is, um, I'm not familiar with that glazing medium. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes glazing mediums can be a little strange just because like they're intended as a sort of finishing layer. Um, so it might actually have some resist to it. That's, that's maybe causing you some, some issues. Um, I know that with, I believe there are some, um, some like mineral spirit, um, like based, uh, varnishes. I think golden makes one, it's called like MSA varnish, um, that I think, I think they'll work over oils. I mean, kind of stabilize. I know that golden also makes an isolation coat. Um, although I think that one is specifically acrylic based. Um, that's, that's what I thought too. That's yeah. why I'm like, I don't know. Um, with oil is always tricky because it is one of those things where it does have it does have a tricky tendency to leach. Um, I believe there is something. Uh, I just I don't know that I know what it is off the top of my head. Okay. Um, then yeah. I don't feel so bad for not. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. If you um, I think I posted it up above, but I we we take questions for folks all the time. I feel like we have at least one phone call a week that's just like somebody asking us a question and we'll never see them in the store. And that's totally fine. We love doing that. Um, but if you want to pitch your question to the email, um, it's been pretty slow this week. So there's a good chance that somebody would probably do some research for you. Right. Um, so feel free to do that too. Um, but yeah, the, the short answer is yes, I think so. But the long answer is it, it might be a little complicated. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right. 
there's a there's a brief summary of of those three, and I just kind of broke them with a with a paragraph break there. Um, but yeah, to again to reiterate, in order of that paragraph, um, this was our first one. So this is the neo color two. Um, so that's the wax pastel, and then uh, that middle one, the Karen Dash uh, super color, is uh, this guy here, um, and that one is the water, basically a watercolor pencil or water soluble pencil, um, and then this one, the Derwent Ink Tense, is that bottom one, and that one will function more similar to an ink. Um, so again, activates once, and then it sets after that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> my pleasure. Um, yeah, how, how are we doing? How, how are we on time and everything? I, uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm hanging out. So. You're doing fine. Yeah, this is cool. good. Uh, you know, keep going. What else do you have? Yeah, have um, so I do. I really just have, uh, I have kind of one more thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What was that? No, no, I was going to say, like, do you have any, uh, any uh, new services for pastel in or, or anything that you would suggest? Yeah, um, let's see. So Paper has been tricky this year, um, as, as some of you might be aware. Um, we are finally starting to see some of that paper come back, um, especially watercolor paper recently has been has been really difficult to get in. Um, I know I did a big order last week that I'm hoping we'll see this week. Um, so hopefully that some of those things will re replenish. Uh, we do have some pretty good like uh, different like textures of, um, of mixed media papers and stuff like that. Um, for any sort of dry media artists, if you haven't worked on Arches cover paper, um, that's a big favorite here in the store. Um, a lot of us really like that paper. Um, so that's Arches, A-R-C-H-E-S, um, cover, C-O-V-E-R. Um, but just like a really great sort of velvety tooth, um, takes uh, charcoal really, really well. It just has a, a really good texture to it. Um, so big fan of that one. I think we do still have a decent stock on that, I hope. Um, if not, there's also, a, I, I really like a Somerset, S-O-M-E-R, uh, S-E-T. Um, and I believe they have a velvet surface paper um, that also is a very toothy and smooth in a similar way. Um, but those are definitely some two big favorites. Um, I, kind of more off the beaten trail. I feel like folks don't usually seek those as, out as much as you know some of your other sort of typical ones. Um, also, in terms of watercolor paper, we do carry um, a number of handmade papers from India uh, by a company called Shizen, um, S H I Z E N. Um, definitely less well known than like a lot of other paper brands, but I, it seems like they're a lot more sort of um, a lot more direct, so uh, more small time. Uh, but they have some incredible uh, handmade watercolor paper that just has like really great, uh, very like sort of rough toothy textures to it. Um, that's super fun for working on with um, with watercolors, with inks, um, some pastel work and stuff I think is very cool in that. Um, so those are some big favorites for sure. Um, there's also in terms of uh, pads and things like that, we do carry, well, speaking of larger sizes of paper, we do carry um, individual sheets of the Canson uh, Mitian or Mitan paper. Um, it's spelled M-I uh, and then space T-I-E-N-T-E-S. Um, so it's like Mitiantes, but the, the, the pronunciation is obviously, obviously different. Um, but those are great sort of texture. They almost have sort of more of an eggshell texture to them, but they come in all kinds of different colors. Uh, we have those in full size sheets, uh, smaller like eight and a half by 11 sheets, and then some different size pads um, in some various colors. Um, but great pastel paper. Um, we do also have, I believe it's called Art Fix or Art Graphics paper, which is the sanded paper we were talking about earlier. Um, that typically comes in a bunch of different colors too. Um, so those are all big favorites of mine, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, we do have, obviously we have pads for uh, watercolorists, printmakers, um, pastel artists, mixed media sort of stuff, um, bristols and things like that. Uh, so lots of different ones there. Uh, we do carry Yupo paper, um, which is pretty popular with watercolorists or um, anyone who works with alcohol inks and stuff like that. Um, it is a plastic paper, um, so it has a non-porous surface, so your paint really sits on, on top of it. Um, so it sort of feels like a very fluid hot press. Um, so you can do some really cool, very soft washes with it. Um, very cool paper. Uh, but yeah, we have that in full size sheets. We do also have pads of, I think, the, the regular weight, which is like the orange cover, um, and then the translucent as well. So you can actually do some, some sort of like light work uh, with it as well, which is pretty fun. Um, but yeah, there's, there's those two. Um, yeah, those are, those are sort of like general things. Uh, any, any other questions, any other materials anybody's wondering about? Do you by any chance carry mulberry paper? We do. Um, so we do have full size sheets of mulberry paper. We do also have a lot of um, different textures of Japanese printmaking paper by a company called Awagami. 
Um, and so those are different sorts of paper blends, but they are, I think a lot of them are technically mulberry or sort of related to. Um, traditionally, folks would call those like rice papers, but we're kind of moving away from that term because it's not exactly accurate. Um, most of those are actually like, uh, you know, plant fibers similar to a mulberry, um, not actually really having anything to do with rice. Um, so uh, some of those will be like, uh, say, Kozo papers, um, or uh, um, I'm trying to think of some other big ones down there. Um, let's see, Kinwashi, uh, things like that. Um, but again, those are just like, uh, the distinction on those is just like different finishes of surface. Um, so they take different media and things like that. Um, usually those are kind of like labeled. Uh, but yes, short answer, we do have mulberry. Uh, we have it in full size sheets. We do also have a roll of it too. Um, so yeah, we have those things as well. Um, yeah, yes. We tr like I said, we try to have a little bit of everything. So <laughs> um, at least cover our, our major basis. Yeah, cool. Well, I think uh, I've got, oh, sorry, what was that? I said, what else do you have for us? Yeah, well, I was gonna say, I think I have one more kind of like cool sort of art medium thing to, to sort of talk about and then I think that kind of reaches the the limits of what I what I've got to show at the very least. Um, if there's more questions, I'm happy to answer, but we can kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, I, this is just kind of a fun one. Um, I try to sort of talk it up because I, I think a lot of folks don't really necessarily know about it. Um, but I think that it's really interesting. Um, as you guys have probably figured out, I, I really like texture and work. Um, so this this is kind of right up my alley. But um, I do have just like a couple examples of. Um, so this is. In, a, in caustic painting. Um, so this is actually hot wax painting. Um, so typically how that process works is, um, and this is actually on like sort of a prepared masonite board. Um, but so typically that process is, um, I have a little set here I can kind of show off. Um, so most of our stuff is from this company r &F. Uh, They're great. We've had demos with them in the past. Um, they have an artist rep uh, who I love. Uh, her name is uh, Dietland. Uh, Vandershoff. Um, she does some really cool uh, sort of like abstract uh, work. Um, but again, very texture focused, very color focused. Um, but the idea is uh, these are little cakes of pigmented wax. Um, and then usually you're working on a hot plate um, and kind of heating up those colors so that they're fluid. Um, and then usually you're using a natural brush, um, usually like a sheep or a hog hair, um, and sort of working into those colors, um, going basically your hot plate is your palette in this circumstance. And then you're working directly onto um, your piece um, and sort of building up these laminated layers of, uh, of wax. Um, but what's really cool about it is uh, heat plays a big factor. Um, so you can get a lot of different sorts of effects um, depending on how you're introducing heat. Um, also depending on the sort of tools that you're using. So you can get a lot of sort of impasto textures. Um, you can also get some sort of like etched or carved textures once the wax dries to actually sort of carve out from. Um, so it's just a really cool, really versatile medium. Um, and it is pretty functional. Like once, once you get into the swing of things, um, typically uh, the cakes last a very long time. Um, you can also sort of blend up your own medium, um, usually using like a soy wax um, that can kind of help stretch your colors even further. Um, but it's just a super versatile medium, um, really cool, uh, really great sort of like um, texture work, very versatile. Uh, so just big fan of that one. Uh, so, so, so I always like to plug that. Um, again, that company was R and F. Uh, so just the, the letters R and F. Um, they, uh, they've been around for quite a while. Um, they have some really cool stuff. They, they have some really functional uh, sort of tools and things like that. Um, but they also have a great YouTube and things like that. If you're kind of curious more about um, sort of encaustic techniques or practices, um, they do have a lot of good information there. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of kind of a fun one, just throwing it in there at the end. Um, my, my boss, um, Kyle, the, the manager here at the store, Kyle Anger, um, he uh, was an oil painter for a very long time. Uh, but recently, I guess it, within the last couple of years, he got into encaustic and that's like pretty much all he does now um because it just it gave him a lot more freedom in terms of uh sort of the function of it um again it generally sets a lot faster than oil but it does because it's wax uh you can reactivate your paint and really rework it um pretty much indefinitely in a very similar way um so a pretty fun jumping off point uh from from oils for sure um but yeah yeah well my husband and i had a chance to come in for the demo awesome. uh, when, when, yeah it was, it was very very good got us really interested yes. in uh, in encaustic Yes, yeah, um, we do. We do try to carry like the general uh, sort of tools. We do have um, RNFs hot plate that that has like temperature controls on it, um, as well as like the. Typically, folks will uh, use like a heat gun uh, to to reactivate the paint and sort of push it around. 
Um, I do know folks who have used like, you know, a much more sort of low key setup of like a camp stove and like a, like a blow dryer. Um, you can definitely get somewhere with that. Um, at, at some point you'll probably want to upgrade. But again, like I said, I, I always try to encourage folks like um, art making, like I think that anybody should do it um, on whatever budget they're working on. Um, so I think that it's totally reasonable to just get into things as, as sort of casually as possible just to get a feel for them. Um, so you can always do it that way. Uh, you'll find if you're, again, if you're curious about this process at all, process at all uh, there's a lot of like really cool like craft blogs that have, um, like recipes or ideas on uh, on doing encaustics with uh, crayons um, because crayons are essentially uh, basically, you know, uh, they're a little bit softer than encaustics because usually encaustics you can't necessarily draw with because um, they're kind of at a, at a higher melting point. Um, but you can do kind of a, a very basic sort of encaustic practice with, with a sort of standard crayons or even wax pastels. Um, so uh, definitely a cool area to explore if anyone's curious too. The, the wax and, and heat and everything just reminded me of, uh, do you guys carry Kasanki supplies? We we do have some batik uh, sort of like, uh, like uh, I can't think of what the term, is it chanting tools um, for sort of like wax painting or pouring in that way. Uh, we don't have like a like a dedicated Sanki like sort of set or anything like that. We do have actually a couple folks who come from Eastern PA um, that usually do load up on, um, we do have like some, some sort of fabric paints and things that I've been told work pretty well for the practice. Um, and as well as like some powdered pigments and things. Um, so we don't yeah, have so like, I'm thinking more for about the ink, like the, uh, the, yes. the dyes, sorry. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. So we, we do have dyes. Um, we have Procyon dyes, which is sort of like your sort of standard cold water, um, dye cold water, just meaning you don't have to boil them. Um, and I think that those function, uh, for, for the process, it's been a while since I've looked, usually it's like, around this time of year that I try to reacquaint myself with it so I can so I can help folks. Um, so it's I haven't done my research yet. Uh, but we do we do have a, a lot of fabric dyes and things like that. And then we do like I said, we do have some of the cups for uh, for batik and things like that, um, which I, I think is very similar, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, same, so yeah. same kind of process with yes. the wax resist and everything. Yep, exactly, precisely. Cool, so we got you covered there. And we do sell, um, so we have encaustic wax, but we do ha also have um, some bags of like soy and uh, and beeswax and things like that as well um, okay. for, cool. for different wax te techniques and things like that. Okay, thank cool. you. Cool, awesome. Yeah, Any anybody else? Any Anyone have any other questions for me? Cool. I just well, want to go shopping now. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I guess I guess this is where I should say. Um, so we are open seven days a week. Uh, currently, our hours are uh, we're we're open on Sundays ten to six, and then Monday through Saturday we're open ten to seven. Um, so so we're we're here every day. Um, Very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we, we've been it, told it that. It's just a wonderful, wonderful store. I mean, I I just can't. If you haven't already been there, I I just cannot stress. Okay. <laughs> enough that I think you should go there it is like you said it's 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 a labyrinth like you just start going through it and there's more and more and um yeah you, you I don't know how you get that selection in but uh thank you for yes. bringing that to the Pittsburgh area yeah for sure well well thank you so much and uh yeah it's 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 always great you know we we try to be a very community focused store um a big benefit of us being employee owned is we we do get a lot of say over uh you know the materials we carry um so it's it's always super super great to talk with folks um we're always very happy to sort of share knowledge or just kind of like chit chat um because again i think that it's such a big part of uh such a big part of art practice is uh you know talking about art um talking about art making specifically i think that uh i think that we kind of forget that that we have a lot of shared knowledge that we can sort of access together um so i think that stuff is super important so yeah, well, well, thank you so much for your support, guys. We, we really appreciate it. Definitely. Cool. All right, and do we have any any other last, any last minute call for questions here before we, uh... oh, I see Cindy Gilberti is on. Hi, Cindy. But, uh, but yeah, so wonderful. Well, again, thank you, Kim. Do you have anything you, uh, you wanna add in before we, uh... We let Garrett go home finally for the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're muted. 
And so I can give them one more plug. Um, a few years ago, uh, the Art Center did a 60 foot mural on the side of the building and we were using uh, the Montana gold spray paint and you were the only place, you were our lifesaver. <laughs> like we, we were there buying boxes of the stuff. Cool. So, That's, yeah, I'm, again, I'm glad you, to hear you that. are <laughs> a very valuable resource to the art community here. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I will say that the uh, the Mon the mural season is not started, so if anyone's <laughs> looking to stock up on your Montana, um, now's the time to do it. And yeah, you uh, have it. It gets a lot more scarce in a in a month or so, but I'm I'm so glad we had it for you then. Yes, um, you did. It's, yeah, it's uh, you know, th it, this obviously goes without saying too, but uh, obviously some stocking things have been a lot harder for us to maintain throughout the last couple of years. Um, it's always it's always our preference that we just have the thing. Um, so we definitely we work super hard to uh, to make sure that we do have the materials that folks want um so i'm, I'm glad it's it's always much better when i'm able to say yes we do have that so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we had that for sure so thank you again my pleasure absolutely and hopefully we'll be back to normal uh next year and we can have you uh there for the night when everybody brings all the food in so Absolutely. that we can uh, get you a good dinner again. <laughs> yeah, and, and the and the art too. I, uh, I, I I always love seeing seeing everybody's work too. So that's that yeah. that would be great to see as well. Definitely. Next I'm I'm I I have faith that next year Certainly. we will be back to that. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it for sure. All right. Well cool. thank you again. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Thank you. Yeah. it was really informative thank awesome. you yeah my, my pleasure I'm, I'm i'm super glad to hear I, <laughs> we're, we're here to help for sure thank you cool well thanks so much guys well, thank you